All right. <clears throat> What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the final episode of Road to the Meat. I am joined for possibly the last time, at least on the series, by Dom DG. What's up, guys? This series started out as Dom's Road to the Meat and then transformed into both of our roads to our first ever powerlifting competition. It started about 20 weeks ago in July when we were both very weak. <laughs> and now we're not so weak anymore. We've come kinda. a long way. We have come a long way indeed. So I just competed last weekend at the USAPL Collegiate Cup in Texas Strength Systems or at Texas Strength Systems in San Antonio, which is actually a pretty big meet. So, I mean, we'll talk about that a little bit later, um, but we're not going to waste that much time. Let's begin with a couple of housekeeping things. So, because Dom's meet was the week preceding or two weeks preceding mine, um, as he was hitting his heaviest singles and competing, I was sort of ramping into my prep. And we didn't really get a chance to talk about my singles leading into competition. So the story of the squat that I actually hit in prep, which was my heaviest, is, uh, well, it comes with some turbulations, let's say. So I drove down to game day barbell because my coach, um, especially for the lower body lifts, really wanted me on kilos because those lifts feel the most different on kilos like versus like the bench. I actually, you know, Dom, do you feel like this is the case? Yeah, I felt like squat. I don't know what it is, but when I use um, calibrated plates, um, I don't know for that it's like closer to my body, but it feels it feels a little bit heavier. Um, I don't know. Or maybe it just feels different and that in turn makes it feel heavier. Uh, same with deadlifts, yeah. So I drove down to Game Day Barbell because that was the relatively closest gym that I had, other than a different gym that I don't I don't go because of other reasons. Um, but um, that was the closest gym that I had that had kilos on it. So everything was going great. <laughs> I got there, everything was fine. As I'm warming up, in fact, I remember the specific warm because it was right before my top set which was three reds and a collar, which is 385 pounds. As I was warming up, in fact, I completed the 385, went down, came back up. But as I got to the top, I let a little bit of like my brace go and my pelvis kind of hyperextended. And I tweaked my goddamn sciatic nerve again. So I picked up a little sciatic injury <laughs> on a warm-up set again during squats. Frustrating so that was, <sighs> I swear I cannot get a break. This is the exact it, it, it's it's not the exact same injury as the one from last year um, after I Jenner's Palpatine program, because that was just a full-on compressed disc. Um, which, you know, kind of put me in bed for a few days. This one, um, it was bad. Like, I'm not going to say it wasn't, like, significant because it was, uh, I mean, I, I was, I had limited mobility, let's say. Um, but it definitely was nowhere near as bad as the compressed disc. Like, I didn't have to go to the doctor. I did go to the Cairo, but, um, like, I didn't, I, did, I, I was able to walk. I was able to do a lot of things. So, thankfully, it didn't absolutely derail my entire meat prep. Um, and you know, my coach reassured me that, look, we're going to do the best we can, but you are not, not doing this comp. Like <laughs> you are doing this comp, whether you have to do it in a wheelchair or not. Uh, he didn't say that, but it was <laughs> the sentiment. The sentiment was there. Yeah. So my favorite part is that despite tweaking it on the warm up set, I still did the top single. Which was the heaviest squat I've ever hit in my entire life. Were you in um were you in pain going into this uh, single? I was in discomfort. I don't know if I would say I was in pain 
Um, I definitely was like, this really blows, and I really wish that I wasn't feeling this way. Yeah. Um, but I think the pain came, like, later. It was, like, a delayed yeah. thing. Yeah. Maybe it was the caffeine blunting, you know, the receptors. Maybe it was the <laughs> adrenaline. Maybe it was just my absolute determination not to... <laughs> to not hit the single <laughs> yeah exactly the heaviest squat i hit in prep was 419 pounds as you can see there was a bit of a twisting on the torso yeah that's probably because of the back injury i want to say yeah and um nico who is the guy on the right there um and dimitri who is the guy on the left there both said that it was death but from this angle, it kind of looks borderline. <laughs> like, I might get called if was, there was a strict judge. So, I don't know. What do you think about that? I, I thought you hit definitely. Can you pause it on the, like, lowest point, you think? Because it's kind of laggy on my side. It's also tough because, um, like, you have bigger legs. So, like, I have to look at... I'm trying to look at the top of the knee, not, like, your quad, you know? Yeah. But I think I think that's depth. From this angle, oh, at least. Cool. I got the Dom seal of <laughs> So that was the heaviest squat single that I hit in uh, prep. And um, this is the heaviest bench single. Now, this bench single was actually done the previous week um, because when I took my final bench single before comp, I took it at my commercial gym and like the benches were so whack. Like they were, they were ridiculously low. Like I had never, I had never noticed this before, but like the commercial gym measures were so low to the ground that I could barely get any leg drive. I could Damn. barely build any arch. So I don't have video of it because I deleted it out of spite, but I loaded four thir- or sorry, 330 and uh, I missed it. Oh, so, I didn't even know that. I don't think. Yeah. I didn't even show it to you. Um, it's not worth looking at it. It was, uh. Yeah, it's not worth looking at. Yeah. So this is the heaviest bench single that I hit. Um, let's see. Successfully. Successfully, on a properly hi- height bench with chalk, um, and decent leg drive. Yep, pull it in. Let's go. Start. Come on, Ryan. Come on, Ryan. Press. Right. Yeah, smooth. Yeah, very smooth. It looks like an RP7. So, uh, which is what it's supposed to be. So, Delos have been a very, very bad lift for me. You guys know that I've had trouble with the deadlift in the past, you know, with my lockout issues and just, you know, not really loving the lift. It's my least favorite one. It's the opposite of Dom. <laughs> my deadlift is trash. Um, so I missed, <laughs> this is what I got footage of. And I think I showed Dom, but I also missed one the next week. Now that one could have been because of my back because it was still not hundred percent then. But I went into that commercial gym and I, and I missed 425, which was actually less than this. But uh, yeah, man, devils were not looking good going <laughs> into this meet, man. So yeah, yeah. anyway, here's my, I'll, I'll put it on screen. This is my final deadlift, the heaviest deadlift I tried to pull in comp, or not in comp, uh, in meat prep. Bring it up! Lock it out, lock it out! Hips! Down! I don't know. If do, you th- do you just think you need more extension at the hip there, or like, why, why isn't that locked out? Like, I'm also not like the best judge of, uh, of lockout, yeah. I guess. If you can see, like, right here, the hips are soft. Um, the knees could be a little soft. It moves but, so uh, fast off the floor, which is the crazy part. Like I know, bro. Yeah. I know. And we're gonna see we're gonna see a lot of that moving into the meat singles. I wanna sort of set the stage here. So I'm a, I uh, was a hundred and twenty kilo lifter competing, like I said, at Texas Strength Systems in the USAPL Collegiate Cup. This is a pretty big meet. There are about three hundred lifters representing all kinds of universities there were two days so the meet was two days i know that you had a beginner meet i think was it all in one day yeah right? well, it was one day so our meet was two days the first day were all the lighter classes so the light guys the light girls um competed on that day and then the day two was all the heavier classes the meets in san antonio i'm in san marcos that's about 45 minutes so i had to get up and commute about 50 45 minutes 
immediately in the morning, fasted, um, and that sucked. Yeah. Like I, I'm not really I'm the kind of person that likes to like drink and eat like as soon as I get out of bed. So having to wait until basically three o'clock in the afternoon to eat something is kind of cr- not not great. Yeah, I originally waited at one twenty point four, which was like over by point four, and I was like, "Fuck!" But then I <laughs> I took off all my clothes, smart, uh, and <laughs> somehow managed to drop like half a kilo. And weigh in at 119.9. It's literally on the dot. That's crazy. Just to give you a frame of reference for the the pound people, the cutoff is 264.5. I weighed in at about 264.3. That's nuts. That's that's how close I was (laughs) to not making weight. So, so yeah, I mean, dude, this meat was crazy, man. There were people who were telling me that I should not do this meat because this is like a big meat and it's a meat that people go and they put their totals in for collegiate nationals, right? So this is a hardcore big meat. Out of mo- out of out of most of the local meats that are in the country, this is one of the biggest ones. So I have people saying, "Bro, you probably shouldn't go here." And, like, I was kind of offended a little bit by that because I was like, man, what the f- stop trying to discourage me from competing. Yeah. But, like, when I got there, I mean, it was, like, it was a big meet. And it was a lo- it was very intimidating. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. There were, there were a ton of lifters. They were all huge guys. And, like, the atmosphere was very, like, this is a hardcore meet. Mm-hmm. Like, this is not for... For beginners, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. there were, but there are probably a lot of people who were doing their first meet here. So yeah, it's not yeah. like I was the only one, but I think a meet like yours would have been a bit better, you know, because then it was a much more relaxed environment, probably. Um, it For didn't sure. feel like there were a lot of stakes. I don't know. I don't know how you felt, right? Yeah. No, I felt like I felt very calm after like getting some of the initial lifts in. Cause most of my nerves were just from like my friends being there. I didn't want to look like an idiot. It wasn't like, I'm like, Oh damn. Like I'm going to get embarrassed by all these really strong people around me. Like everyone around me was, you know, around my level of experience, like for everyone, it was their first meet. So from that perspective, I had like no nerves about that. So, um, I really enjoyed that aspect of it. And I would definitely recommend like, um, I don't know how, like if this is a common thing, like beginner meets, like, I don't think that's a very common thing, but maybe finding a meet that's, um, more for less experienced people when you're first starting, just so, you know, you're not intimidated by all these like crazy strong guys, but even so, I don't know how you feel. I feel like it's fine to, cause no one's really paying attention to how much exactly you're lifting. Um, it's more yourself thinking about it, you know? Yeah, I definitely agree. I think that it's, well, I think, um, perhaps like, you know, going to like a bigger meet may not be the best, especially if you're somebody who does get anxious a lot. Yeah. Um, because there was a crowd, there was a crowd of probably about a hundred to 150 people right. who are watching all the attempts. Um, I don't know how big the crowd, if there even was a crowd for your meet, but it was actually uh, a pretty big crowd, but it was all like friends and family. So, um, it was pretty good though. I think there was the same thing, but like just like being on the stage because there was like a stage, the L platform was elevated and you could see down. And I mean, like especially uh, if you like have anxious, like if you have anxiety, like tendencies or, or maybe issues, um, then maybe picking something a bit more low key for your first time, just to you know get that first meet experience out of the way. Yeah, um, maybe the smarter thing to do, um, but. Um, that would never discourage anybody from competing at whatever meet they want to go to. For sure. I mean, you saw videos of it backstage. We were kind of like sardines back there. It was pretty cramped and packed in. And uh, I think immediately after I weighed in, I started drinking. I was drinking. I was down in Pedialyte like it was freaking yep. liquid gold. 
uh, I, I had like a ton of sour candy with me. So I just started eating sour candy. I forgot my pasta at home, which sucked. <laughs> so Damn. I didn't get, I didn't get that pasta in. Um, but yeah, I just kind of downed as much candy as I could and drank water. I, I drank, it was hot too. I mean, I was sweating my ass off, Damn. um, because there was no, like, there was no like, you know, air conditioning. There was no yeah, yeah. like circulation. It was like, there was a, there was like a giant, like, I don't know, I guess giant like hole in the wall. <laughs> right. I don't want to say it like that. Like it was some sort of like dingy place, but there's a hole in the wall. So the outside was right there. But like there was no circulation, so it was it was hot. So I was sweating my ass off, and I was down in all all the liquid that I could. I'm probably about an hour after I weighed in, we started to warm up for squats. Unfortunately, I don't have any footage of my first two squat attempts, so I'm gonna have to talk about them. Um, so my first squat attempt was um, 375, which is 170 kilos, uh, which is three reds. Or it's not quite three reds. It's almost three reds because yeah. the collar. Because the collar, yeah. Yeah. So that went really, really fast. My coach had all my attempts already planned out. He had this. He, he was like the guy with the clipboard. He had yeah, a clipboard yeah. with him. And he's like, this is what we're going to do. And if this happens and this happens and if this happens and this happens. He's smart. Uh, yeah, he's a, good, he's a smart guy. So, yeah, he, it was kind of funny because he was the only one with the clipboard. <laughs> but um, so, yeah, that went just as planned. The next attempt, I believe, was I want to say 180, which is 396, um, and that one went went pretty good as well. I think it's tough to remember because I was like super laser focused right here, uh, like you know they have like this behind the curtain part, and I'm just kind of sitting there in my chair. They made me sit. Don't be on your feet. Don't leak any energy. Just sit. They were fanning me and shit. Oh, shit. Uh, yeah, I know, bro. I was like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> uh, but yeah, so I was sitting there. I was just kind of like, I didn't even have headphones on. Yeah. Like, I was just kind of like staring and just focusing and just like sh- like trying to get through this because I was like worried about my back, really. I think that was one thing that was on my mind the whole time was like, is my back going to hold up throughout this entire process? 180, yeah. 396. Yeah. Went. And I hit it, and I think it was pretty good. Like, I wasn't getting called at all on any of these. I got three whites the whole time. So as we move into my final, which is 190 kilos or 419 pounds, this is significant because I hit – this was uh, matching my best in training. Okay. And you'll see that that's a theme throughout this entire meet. The first one that hit was 419 pounds. The backdrop's pretty cool. I know. This is like a professional professional, bro. Do you think that moved similarly to in training? I feel like it was very similar. Maybe a little slower. Yeah. Actually... If I'm being honest, I thought it moved a lot better than in training. Yeah. Not by not by a significant amount, but because in the training I kind of twisted. twisted. Yeah, it looks cleaner here too. Yeah. So, you know, I really wanted 425 at this meet. Um, but 190 kilos was also something that I was thinking like, I can probably hit this in the meet. Yeah. So I was really happy. Um that sticking point was kind of surprising. I wasn't expecting to stick right there so hard. Um, but, you know, well, the thing the thing that my coach told me before going out there was like, don't, you're going to have to fight for it. Just don't stop pushing. Yeah. Just don't stop. And, um, well, I managed to pull it out. So Good shit, bro. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, considering coming from the back injury, <laughs> I was very happy. Were you that, feeling that, it after that, or were you feeling good? Actually, I was feeling pretty good, um, but I was, like, really, really hydrated. I don't think I started to feel achy until deadlifts. Yeah. After squats, it was more of the same. Going to go back to the warm room. We're going to hydrate. We're going to keep eating. We're going to keep sipping on the Pedialyte. And then we basically had about 20 to 30 minutes in between lifts. So I took my squat and then I had about 20 to 30 minutes of rest in between when I started warming up for bench. 
Right. That was how that worked. So one thing that I want to mention, for especially for bench, because it affects bench very, very, very significantly, is rack heights. Mm. So before I went to compete, I went to a gym that um, had TSS racks. So all of these were done on TSS racks. So I went to a gym that had a TSS rack, and I got my rack heights from that TSS rack. And that way that I didn't have to, you know, put them in beforehand and I would already have them in. I think that they wanted us to do it that way. Yeah. However, the racks that were at the meet were different from the racks that I had tested my height at, specifically the bench rack. So I had my pin height when I tested it at the other gym at a five okay at the this place my rack height was actually at a nine wow so that's a pretty significant difference so it was lower than you wanted it or oh yeah way lower way way lower so this is my first attempt this is 137 kilos or 303 pounds i think it was a bit aggressive going for above 300 on my first attempt but (laughs) um it's okay. Yeah. But you'll see like Did you have someone lift it off for you? Uh, yeah, of course. There you go. I don't know if you can tell, but like if you watch watch this lift off and how much it comes up. <laughs> Stay tight. Yeah. See that? Yeah. That's that's a lot of power leak that I have here. Yeah. So that was not something that I was expecting going into my first attempt. Um, and I think that's maybe why it looks a little bit slower than I wanted to. However, 303 still moves relatively fast as yeah, it was supposed great. to for, for, for a first attempt. Yeah. By attempt number two, I had finally set my rack height. I got my rack height to be where it was before. Unfortunately, I don't have any footage of the liftoff. Except for that. No, it's so all right. this is, I believe, yeah, right here. This is 145 kilos or 319 pounds. Nice. It looked like you had like a baby sticking point, like a little bit off the chest, but it wasn't, yeah. it wasn't bad. Yeah, I mean, I, I know it felt a lot slower than I had wanted it to. Yeah, like I yeah. felt like off the chest, it was not, it was not where I wanted it to be. Yeah, it's weird how like the difference between looking at a video of a lift versus how it felt in the moment. Like every time I look at a video of a lift, it's usually a lot faster than how it feels. I know um, what the fuck. Yeah, it's hard to judge. <laughs> That's why I have people call my attempts. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we decided to play it safe and basically chip it, mm-hmm. right? So we only put, so this is 147 and a half kilos or 325 pounds. This again was a match based off of the training. Be, yeah, the best single that I hit in training. And I think you'll be able to see the rack difference here. Yeah. Um, and good. how like little I'm actually going to have to extend my triceps Elbows, in order yeah. to get this off. Yeah. Hey, Arnie. You're strong as hell. Let's go. Oh, my God. Oh, Come on, Arnie. It moved so it still moved pretty fast, but yeah, it shifted like backwards. Yeah. No, my favorite part is like it moved faster than the three one to one forty five. At least in my head, it felt like it moved a lot faster. I think that moved faster for sure. Yeah, I feel like you probably had three thirty then, right? Yeah, as you, I don't know if you can tell by the end of the video, but I like laughed after I hit that. I was like, <laughs> Not expecting hell? it. Yeah, I know. yeah, no, I was kind of upset because uh, I so desperately wanted one fifty, which is three thirty one. I was like, oh, I wish I could, because that's my best all time, right? Yeah, yeah. So I was like, oh, if I could have hit that, bro, I would have been so great. Yeah. I mean, the pauses seemed pretty long too. 
Oh yeah, dude. I had a buddy who was a 66 and he was telling me that he was getting these death pauses. They would hold him here for like a good one and a half seconds. Fuck. Like, and it was, it was, so I was like just trying to do my best to put all of the tension in my pecs so that this bar does not move. Don't let the bar move at all. Yeah. Don't let the bar move at all. Don't give him a reason to give me a death pause. Yeah. So end of the benching with 325 pounds, which was the best I uh, benched in prep. And, um, you know, I think that's probably I'm, like your best bench in terms of. Like you did it in competition, so there was like so a good amount of pause there. Like I don't know if you've ever paused to that extent in training, um, with heavier weights, even you know. Yeah, I think the heaviest I did three count, but that was only like two sixty five. That was the heaviest three count. Yeah. So yeah, I, I, you know I'll take it. You know that makes it, that makes me feel a little bit better about it. So I'll, I'll go ahead. I'll take it. Um, and then finally we finished off with deadlifts. So deadlifts weren't into the evening. So as you can see, all the lights are going to be off <laughs> in this, uh, right. this thing. And like, I don't know, at this point I was just, I was feeling great. I was like in the meat environment. My team was around me. My coach, and my handlers were like, I was like, I was in the zone, I guess you could say. Yeah. And, uh, so deadlifts start, I was actually feeling confident about deadlifts for the first time in my entire life. <laughs> so <laughs> all the gentlemen. I know, right? So as you can see, my my legs are caked in that baby powder. I did the same thing, yeah. Yeah, my my coach had me like have like like be like this because he didn't want any part of my arm to touch the baby powder because it was gonna slip otherwise. So I was sitting here like you know a doctor with sterile hands, like you know don't touch anything, don't touch anything. Yeah. So uh, this is my opener, 175 kilos, which was 385 pounds. Perfect. And as you oh, can see, damn. I just absolutely crushed it. Like I couldn't, I can't tell you how happy I was that that moved so fast. Damn. Just oh, and that lockout was very, very nice. This is my second. This is four hundred seven pounds or one hundred eighty five kilos. <laughs> Form looks good. I know. Yeah, it looks clean. Now, we get into the final. And guys, I'm going to spoil it here, but I missed this. Mm. So, this was 430 or 195 kilos. Now, I want you guys to look at this video. Because they, apparently, they called me on an up and down. Mm. But, the front judge she gave me the down command uh, but apparently like after she gave me the down command i went down for a second and then came back up and then went down and they called me on it wow now i think personally i got called on soft hips because and both the side judges called me but you guys be the judge here so this is 4 30 I was so psyched because you'll see it just rips off the floor too. Yeah, I was gonna say this jump makes sense from how well the second attempt moved. So I got two reds from the side judges on that. So I don't know, Don. What do you think? Can you tell? I don't really see the up down thing. Am I missing it? I don't. I don't know. That's what I'm. That's what I don't know. I could see maybe soft hips. Maybe. Like, yeah, maybe like this is my lockout right here, and like the hips aren't fully extended. It's close though. But the front judge didn't call me on it. It was only the side judges. Weird. I feel like you were right there with that one, too. I know, man. Oh, bro, would I ever hit this lift? <laughs> I, think it was, so, I think it was definitely better than the one in training. Yeah, I, I do, too. I do, too. It, I, it ripped right up. And, like, that was the... I was so confident. Like, I was so, so, were so you, confident. Were you, when you were putting the weight down, did you expect to have white lights? I did. Yeah. I, I was expect I was expecting maybe one red. Yeah. But not two. That sucks. I know, bro. I was so sad. 
anyway, uh, so I did miss. I went eight for nine. I missed my final deadlift, and that left me with a total of one one five zero eleven fifty five hundred and twenty one kilos, which edges out Dom at the very, very, very sliver of fifteen pounds. Yep. Which is what like, <laughs> like two. <laughs> Or, or, or like six kilos or something like that. Nah, I wish I added a couple pounds on my squat. <laughs> yeah, I know, bro. I was like, damn, you could have, you might have been, dude, your Delev carried, you you pulled almost 70 pounds heavier than me, which is yeah. absolutely yeah. nuts. That, yeah, it's crazy. It's just, and you it, have more in the tank, too. It's funny. It's just, uh, it's, it's back to your bench was crazy relative to mine and my deadlift was crazy relative to yours. And our squats were pretty equivalent. Like your squat was a little bit better, um, but like in the same ballpark, obviously. If we were using a formula, Dom absolutely destroys me. With He has a 344 Wilkes and I had a 299 Wilkes. So do we call it a draw? <laughs> <laughs> no, I want everyone give uh, Ani a congratulations in the comments. I'm going to give Ani the W here. Um, oh, what a does guy. That, does that make you want to cut, though, in terms of the uh, the Wilkes score? Oh, hell yeah. Are we going to see a, le- a lean <laughs> Ani in the future? Dude, oh, are we going to talk about future plans right now that <laughs> the series is over? Yeah, I, mean, I, can- I think since uh, we've come to the end here... Uh, guys, I don't, I don't want to take too much more time on this episode, but this is kind of the finale of our road to the meat series, but I do think we will be back in the future. Um, talking about our future plans in terms of training and what we want to do. And if we want to compete again, which I both, both of us, I think feel like we want to compete again. Ani, I don't know about you. Dude, this experience has been so much fun, bro. I cannot, I'm actually kind of like itching like yeah. i was like dude is there a comp in, like marsh can i can i do it can i just turn around and do it immediately <laughs> like, yep, yep. like so yes absolutely we'll be competing again yep i'm i'm excited to compete in the future um it was such a great experience for the first one um we definitely have big things ahead and a lot of improvements yeah. to make i'm excited all right well this video is pretty long as much as i want to like immediately talk about the off season. Yeah. Um, I think we should probably cap it here. Right. Um, really quickly before I go, I just wanted to give two huge shout outs. First is my coach, Brian. He handled me so well. Um, despite having responsibilities to other lifters during that day, he called all my attempts. He made sure that I was in the right headspace. He never doubted that I could lift anything for a second. And just having his level-headed presence around me was very, very key in my success. And I would not be here without him at all. And then the second guy I want to shout out is my buddy Gil. Because Brian had to handle people during... He had to handle a couple of 105s who came right before I would lift. So they were lifting while I was warming up. My buddy Gil, he handled me in the warm-up room. And he helped me, you know, stay hydrated, stay focused stayed like making sure I was eating, sipping my Pedialyte and he handled all my warmups and my warm-up selection. And he was just another overall very calming presence in that whole that whole meat setting. So I really couldn't have done it without him either. Thank you guys so much. I know that Brian at least watches these. So uh up, bro? Uh, <laughs> I think it's time to wrap this up for real. Yep. And I think I think you should do it because this is this is your egg. This is your idea at the beginning. <laughs> okay. Plus, I think I introed us in the first episode. So. <laughs> okay, <laughs> guys. This is the end of the series. We've been through many, many weeks of training. And it's finally culminated in Ani and I both doing our first meets um, across the country. I mean, this has been crazy. Um, I know. I know. And I'm excited to see maybe if we could compete together in, on the same platform in the future. That'd be awesome. Um, oh, that'd be so great. So thanks, guys, uh, for following along with us this whole entire time. I really appreciate it. Um, peace out.